Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar for registration and COVID issues for the Newport to Bermuda race. Uh, with 72 days approximately left to the race, I want to welcome you all. I know that we've put out a few bulletins lately that have uh, come as uh, some interest to all the competitors. Of course, we are still dealing with um, COVID in the world and we're learning to live with it. And a lot of this information needs to get out uh, to all competitors uh, and captains so that we can ensure that we have a successful race. And in particular, uh, to make the registration process when we all arrive in Newport in June, as smooth as possible for everyone involved. I wanna thank uh, fellow committee members this evening for uh, helping out with this presentation. A lot of work has been happening in the background by them uh, for a number of months. Uh, it feels like years uh, and I wanna thank them for all their hard work. Uh, I think if you're probably on this call, you've probably had some sort of touch from a committee member, uh, whether it's on participation or the ambassador program or Andrew and the entry process itself. Uh, we also have Commodore Craig Davis from the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club on, and he's specifically gonna be talking about the maritime travel authorization process as Bermuda has been key in uh, dealing with the local authorities in Bermuda for when we arrive uh, and what we have to do uh, to ensure that we can all get on board our vessels and sail uh, on June 17th. Uh, so with that, we have a couple of areas that we're gonna cover off. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer all your questions. Um, as Kate said, uh, if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to put them in the Q&A and we will try and visit them before the end of this uh, session. Uh, first, Andrew is gonna deal with uh, the, what the registration process in Newport will look like, followed by Commodore Davis uh, with the MTA process. Uh, and then Mark is gonna specifically round it off with uh, the COVID testing procedures that uh, we need to implement uh, to run a safe race and to be able to enter the island of Bermuda. So um, thank you all for coming. Uh, put your questions in the Q&A. Andrew, um, will you take it away? Do my best. Thank you, Summers. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure if you're, a, if you're a captain in this race, you've probably seen way too many emails from me already. So you're probably familiar with my name and now you get to see what, what I look like. You'll see me next probably at registration in come June. Um, so I was going to give you guys a little overview of, of the process. Um, obviously a major change for the 2022 race um, puts a bunch of compression on what would normally be a four day, you know, rather casual registration process in Newport starting Sunday afternoon. Um, so registration is going to be open as usual. So per the uh, per the notice of race and the schedule that you'll find on the website. And um, Mark, you might as well share that graphic so we can see it. Um, the registration is going to be open starting Sunday afternoon and right through Wednesday. I'll talk about some extended hours in a moment. The unfortunate thing is uh, because of a change that Bermuda is requiring us to adhere to for the 2022 race there's a lot of compression placed on this week. The big change is that Bermuda requires that every visitor, including us who are sailing there, have a marine travel authorization uh, prior to uh, passing through immigration um, in Newport. And effectively that means prior to racing. Because this marine travel authorization also requires a negative COVID test, um, there's a bit of uncertainty about who's actually going to be able to actually get on boats and race. Because of this uncertainty um, and the marine travel author required by the marine travel authorization, as a race organizer, we need to make sure that the crew that is actually going to race is actually valid for entry into Bermuda. Because what we don't want to have is boats that register on a Sunday and then subsequently two or three people end up sick. And now we have a scramble to figure out how those boats are gonna be able to race correctly and under the rules in the proper divisions by Friday because they're already registered. So effectively registration is going to have to occur after all the requirements for marine travel authorization have been met um, or at least the key requirements. And for us, that really means COVID testing. 
So with that in mind, um, and Craig's going to get into the, the uh, MTA or the Marine Travel Authorization in a little bit, but the reason for this compression that we're talking about is simply because um, we need to reduce the changes after uh, registration to nearly zero so we can ensure that all the boats are qualified to race. So what we really need to do is make sure that everyone gets a negative COVID test and tells their skipper before the skipper shows goes up for registration. Because the marine travel authorization requires one of two tests to be performed, and Craig's going to get into more detail on that, um, the earliest possible window for registration is on Monday when the window for PCR testing opens under the Bermuda regulations. So as early as Monday morning, PCR tests could be taken, and if those results are negative, that crew, that boat can, can register right away. Problem is PCR testing is you have to schedule it. There's some limited capacity and um, there's some turnaround time. Because of that turnaround time, it may not be possible for a skipper to have negative tests for his crew until sometime considerably after Monday morning. It could be Tuesday or Wednesday. Another option that Craig and, and also Mark will talk about the availability of testing and, and how to plan for some options there. Um, the next window is potentially antigen testing, which is available starting Wednesday. So for those who aren't able to get negative test results from a PCR test before Wednesday morning could avail themselves of, of antigen testing on Wednesday morning. That can be rather quick turnaround. And so presumably almost everyone should be able to get antigen tested in the morning on Wednesday and then skippers can show up to register with their with, with the knowledge of all their crews having negative tests um, sometime after that by Wednesday. Um, recognizing that it's likely that a lot of our competitors are going to be doing testing on Wednesday, and typically we would close our registration Wednesday at four so that we can prepare scratch sheets and class divisions and do all that work before our Thursday deadline for, for publishing all that information. We normally would close at, at four in the afternoon or 1600. We're gonna extend that until um, 1900 because we realize there's gonna be a crush. We'll also be adding a number of registration stations. So instead of having one or two, we're gonna have at least five registration stations for, for captains to enter their boats um, through, through onsite registration on Wednesday. We'll also be available Monday and Tuesday for those crews who can figure out how to get PCR testing in a quick turnaround, but uh, we do expect a lot of compression on Wednesday. What that really means is that there's very little time for a race program, a captain to show up for registration on Monday, realize that they don't have all of their uh, bits and pieces together and be able to come back two days later with that all sorted. It really is going to require that captains of programs have all their I's dotted and T's crossed before they show up for registration because there's not gonna be a lot of time to sort out problems. So I'll get to that later in the, in the process, a couple of weeks down the road, I'll start emailing out programs. Hey, you're, you're missing this, you're missing that. You don't quite have enough um, of these credentials, et cetera. We'll hopefully get way ahead of this so that no one's going to arrive unprepared. Um, so I, I think that if there are captains on, on the call and I hope there are many, um, you should get very, very familiar with the live entry status view on Sailgate. Um, so you can see which uh, of the task items are not in green. Um, those need to be attended to before you bother showing up at onsite registration. And you should have, you're welcome to show up at onsite registration to ask questions. But if you're showing up expecting to register your boat, everything in Sailgate ought to be green and you need to have negative tests for all your crew. So, Hopefully that's clear and I'm happy to take questions at the end after um, Mark and the Commodore also go through their sections of this. But I wanted to share a couple of strategies that I thought might be helpful for crews in preparing to go through this process. And really the strategies are to hedge against the variability that might exist in your crew list if you have one or two crew members um, Wednesday morning after they take their antigen test, they're positive, they are going to get denied marine travel authorization and you may now have a problem because you may be two crew members short. They may have critical credentials that you can't race according to the rules with those credentials, or it might drop you out of one division or something. Um, so here's some strategies that you might consider um, embracing now. One is to overtrain. 
Um, as everyone knows, for example, you need two um, medical certifications on board. Well, you might want to have three or four uh, so that if you end up dropping one, you're not in a crisis situation because you're not going to be able to get a first aid course done on Wednesday afternoon. Same thing with offshore, with your offshore training. You might consider having an extra crew member or two uh, with offshore training. And I think importantly, and this one would help registration out a ton and it will reduce stress on your side, I would suggest you have provisional crew members. And what I mean by that is, for instance, I plan to sail with eight people on our boat. I have 10 members on my crew list right now. They're all in Sailgate. They're all gonna have their credentials validated, their safety at sea, their uh, first aid training. They're all gonna have their ISAF categorizations. Everything will be done in Sailgate, their emergency information, their immigration information. So I'll have 10. What that means is that my life raft might indicate out of compliance because I only have a life raft for eight. But right now I wanna get them into Sailgate and make sure that all their validations are checked off. And then once I get negative test results for all my crew, I can just delete those two from my crew list and I'm good to go. Or I can delete the ones that end up having a positive test and my other two crew members are already in Sailgate and already ready to go. We're gonna leave Sailgate open for crew changes, even though the crew list deadline is June 3rd and, and I will harass everybody about making sure we have complete crew lists, but it'll be open for changes right up until the moment you show up for registration. So before you show up, if you have changes to make, do them in Sailgate, remove the crew member that you don't need, add the crew member that you need, presumably all of their credentials will already be there and all of the boat related requirements. Do you have enough safety at sea? Do you have enough medical training? Are you in the right category in terms of sailor categorizations? All of that will be current in Sailgate the moment you walk in the door. So we're gonna print out your crew list. You're gonna to attest to the fact that yes, all of these have negative tests. And if everything else is green checked, you're good to go. So you'll be able to make last minute changes in Sailgate, but I encourage you to make sure that you have provisional crew members already loaded and ready to be on your crew list from that moment on so you don't have to scramble for credentials. So, and the other thing I would do with your provisional crew members is make sure they're part of your testing plan. So their provisional crew members should test just like their crew because you're not gonna to wanna to have to, when you find out two are positive, then go back into the testing process with your two provisional crew members. So um, I think with some careful planning, um, this is all very doable. It does, it's gonna require, um, yeah, a little bit more organization than in the past, but with some careful planning, I think we can achieve what Bermuda is requiring us to achieve and hopefully not have too crazy a day on Wednesday. Um, before I pass this off to, I believe, the Commodore, I just want to point out that we're also going to be open late on Tuesday night for those crews that do manage to get P PCR testing and want to register on Tuesday night. We'll also be open to uh, till 1900. Thanks, Andrew. Um, before Commodore Davis takes over, um, just want to remind people on the call that if you're putting questions into the chat, we may miss them. If you can put the questions into the Q&A instead, then we will make sure that we have a record of them and we will get an answer to you. Um, all right. And Summers, Thanks. I just wanted to add that when you use the Q&A feature, there's also an answered tab. So you'll, you can actually scroll through those because maybe the question you had has already been answered and Mark is in there right now answering them live um, as yeah. well. Yes, okay, great. Um, Commodore Davis. Um, please inform everybody what an MTA is. Thank you, uh, um, Chairman. Um, good evening, everybody. And uh, uh, while we might have wished that we were done with COVID uh, prior to this uh, race, there are still vestiges that are sticking out there. Um, I will say that the Brock Group has been engaged with the Bermuda Government Department of Health for well over six months. Uh, um, investigating ways of minimizing impact to the race. Um, I will say that up till about only six weeks ago, there were still additional more onerous uh, regulations that were in place. A lot changed as of March 7th. And while we might hope that uh, other things may change by the time June comes around, we have to actually plan and uh, um, get our processes in order for what is currently in place today. 
Today, Bermuda still has a, uh, uh, a requirement for pre-departure testing. Doesn't matter whether you come in by water or by air. So people who fly uh, fill out a, a document called a travel authorization, and people who come in by sea uh, fill out what is called a mariner's travel authorization. The links for these are all in bulletin uh, 11 that was circulated uh, previously to all competitors and is on the Newport Bermuda race uh, official notice board under bulletin 11. Um, please go read the link, read the, uh, 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 the information that is contained in bulletin 11. There is a specific description of what the Mariner's travel authorization process looks like. Effectively, it is a web page driven uh, process where you actually go in and uh, uh, select Mariner's travel authorization. You then fill in the expected um, arrival uh, date in Bermuda, and this being a sailboat race, feel free to be creative, but uh, uh, I expect that those will be, you know, from the 19th onwards in general. Um, you will be able to fill out the Mariner's travel authorization form for up to a month prior to the actual race. Um, that Mariner's travel authorization form actually does have a number of requirements in it for information. They are detailed in the Bulletin 11, but effectively at a high level, it will include travelers' uh, details, passport information, that sort of stuff. It will include a uh, area where you'll need to actually provide your proof of vaccination as required by the Bermuda government, which is also in the notice of race. Um, and that's you know, a, a soft copy of the file that you would have detailing your completed uh, vaccination against COVID-19. For the avoidance of doubt, uh, boosters are not required by the Bermuda government. They're welcomed, but not required. And the definition of fully vaccinated is uh, contained again on the Bermuda website but it's basically a fully vaccinated traveler has received a full course of COVID-19 vaccine. Um, they give a list of all the vaccination types, whether it's Pfizer, AstraZeneca, J Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Sinopharm, Sinovac, Serum Institute of India, et cetera. But a full course of a, vac a vaccine means um, everything according to the manufacturer's recommendation um, and with at least 14 days from the date of the final dose of vaccination. So proof of that will be required in order to actually fill out the MTA. You'll be able to upload that along with the other information. You will also put in things like the name of the yacht, um, intended departure from Bermuda, um, the address of the individual while in Bermuda, um, and there is a fee, a $40 fee, which also covers any outbound COVID-19 tests that may be required depending on your uh, departure destination. For example, flying back to the US, you'll need an outbound COVID test in order to actually uh, go back to the States via air. If you actually go back via water, however, you don't require a test. This is the current guidance that we have. The last element, and I know there's a lot of questions coming in the chat about this, is this discussion about a pre-departure um, COVID-19 test. Um, now, the pre-departure COVID-19 test as defined by the Bermuda government, um, is required to either be a, a PCR test taken up to four days prior to travel, um, or a, a supervised antigen test taken no more than two days before departure. Um, the results of that particular uh, test need to then be uploaded into your MTA at which point you would be have a completed MTA uh, response from the Bermuda government. This is a process that's done wholly online and is uh, a not administered or visible to the Bermuda Race Organizing Group. Um, they are, are very familiar with the volume of people that will be actually uh, coming to uh, put their information in here. Uh, they're very confident they will be able to handle the volume. They do it for cruise ships, as an example, with thousands of people coming on one ship. Um, so they're very comfortable with the process and how it should actually uh, um, proceed. Um, it is recommended to fill your MTA out 
earlier than the, the week that everybody is arriving into Newport, with the only remaining information to be the results of your COVID-19 test. In the email you get when you originally populate your MTA, you'll have a link to actually go in and upload your test results um, at the end of it. There is also a uh, hotline uh, provided by the Bermuda government for questions that uh, come up as a, a course of filling out an MTA. Um, and they're more than willing to actually help uh, fill, uh, fulfill that particular process. With regard to the PCR testing, and I know that uh, uh, Andrew and Mark have more information on this in, the, in a minute, but the, the requirements that have been set have not been set by Brock. They have been set by the Bermuda government. Uh, we've worked quite hard to get them down to as, as minimal as possible. However, this is the current status and uh, the Bermuda government is, uh, um, feels that this is the right balance for both welcoming our guests to Bermuda, we'd love to have you all here, and making sure that it's done in as safe a manner as is possible. Um, so that's the, the MTA process. It's, it's driven again by the online form. That form, the link to that is in Bulletin 11. I think it's also been posted again on the chat just now. Um, please go in and actually look through it. An MTA has to be filled out for each individual coming to Bermuda. Um, and the same thing actually has to happen for anybody who's flying. So if you have a, a family or, or delivery crew flying into Bermuda, there is a separate link. Um, it's also in bullet for the travel authorization. It's a parallel process that looks almost identical. The difference realistically is the methods of people coming into Bermuda. Um, please read through the fine print in your MTA as you actually do it. There are elements in there that we're not familiar with from uh, uh, doing the race in the past. Things like you have to declare where you're staying. Um, things like making sure that people have, uh, you know, insurance stuff is all sorted out. Anybody who's done international travel recently will not be surprised with any of the things that are in there. These are standard pieces that uh, uh, everybody should have seen, but I strongly encourage people to actually go through and have a look at it. You can start the MTA process at any point. You could be clicking on, on your screen right now, just select a dummy date um, when, it, when you see the calendar pop up and it will pop up the next page, which has all of the information fields that will actually be needed. There is one caveat to that at this moment. When you actually go in, excuse me, <coughs> and do that right now, you, and let's say you actually do select that particular uh, um, piece to it, the MTA that will come up right now does not have the Newport Bermuda race listed yet as the arrival, um, I believe it's the arrival mode coming into Bermuda, that will actually be corrected before the actual uh, um, uh, uh, June comes along. It will actually be a valid, uh, um, you know, what is it actually called? It is the, excuse me one second. It is the arrival mode, I was correct on that. So at the moment it just has cruise ship. Um, but when the uh, Bermuda race uh, uh, will have the Newport Bermuda race in there. So that's the, the MTA process. Um, certainly anybody who has an issue or a question separately to this, uh, there is a hotline. It is on the website page. I encourage people to actually go in and, and uh, review the page uh, uh, as soon as possible. It's really not onerous. It's just a case of following the actual uh, uh, guidelines that are on the page. And uh, certainly we will all help as much as we possibly can. Um, Summers, I think that's Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Here. Yeah, um, I think it's probably also worth mentioning that the MTA is an, the integral part for immigration uh, officials in Newport uh, when every crew member is going to visit them uh, with their passport to get pre-clearance into the island. Uh, that's a, that's been a practice, that's been a practice that the race has done for for many many cycles, uh, providing. Uh, Bermuda Immigration Services in Newport, uh, just so that uh, crew members, once they get to Bermuda, do not have to um, stand in line uh, and clear immigration and customs. Uh, the captain uh, will be able to clear all the crew in 
when he clears customs himself uh, on, upon arrival at the RBYC. Um, okay, uh, we have a number of questions about COVID tests. And luckily, Mark Lency is up next to talk all about COVID tests. And hopefully, we will not be here uh, until the wee hours of the morning. Yeah, right. Uh, that was directive in nature, for those of you that didn't recognize that from my boss, to keep this short. Uh, but first, uh, I, I've been answering as many questions as I could keep up with in the chat. There were a lot of, of uh, things that I would say expressed concern about that the MTA process might in some way delay or cause you to need to travel earlier. Not so. This thing has gone famously and it's been working for over a year now. Uh, you're going to get your approval and, you know, and they're manning up. We're working with them. They understand the big rush. Uh, we're expecting the approvals once everything's filled out properly in 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and people flying into Bermuda, same deal. Uh, you're, you're actually covering a lot of the immigration process by doing the MTA process. So it goes, it goes quite smoothly. Uh, you'll show up with your approved MTA on your mobile device. I don't have mine handy, uh, at Bermuda Immigration in Newport to pre-clear. And they're going to look at that instead of asking you for all that stuff. It's all online. It's all documented. So it actually makes this work smoothly. It also means you really have to have your act together, which is the bottom line of what I'm going to now talk about on COVID testing. Those of you that have traveled internationally have gone through this. If you've traveled in the last uh, 18 months, uh, you know how it goes. Um, if you plan ahead, you check your, your, what you're going to do out, uh, you follow the guidance. And if you're prepared, this all happens. The challenge we have is we have 2,200 racers of which approximately 70% read anything we send and of them, some fraction actually believe us. So the 150 of you here are a huge start towards, uh, us, uh, getting the word out and I encourage you to spread the word. Uh, everything you see here, this graphic and everything is going to be up on the website. So let's let's start talking about this. First, a lot of questions. What is a supervised antigen test? The only thing it is not, it is not a self-test kit that you do yourself at your home office or hotel. It may, in fact, be the identical kit, but it's monitored by a certified agency. That's not your skipper. It's not a doctor on your staff. It's a certified agency that's certified to do this. Um, it, it could be a business. It can be done in person. Uh, it used to be able to be done at a drug store. That's less and less of that is available because there's not so much demand anymore. It can be done by video. And that's probably one of the best options you have. So what that leads to is, I'm gonna put up the timeline here. Yes, we have to get about 2000 racers through testing on Wednesday morning. You do not all have to be in Newport. You can be anywhere on the planet with an internet connection as long as you have planned ahead. Um, so let's take a look at that timeline one more time here. All right. So we're starting the race 1300 Monday or Friday. <laughs> Off to a bad start. I've already had the question, what if the race is delayed? If that happens, don't worry about it. We got it. We've been talking about this. You're not going to have to retest because uh, we can't actually delay the race that long. Um, so backing up, Bermuda's rules are days ahead. So the PCR test can be taken starting at midnight Monday. Um, the catch, as Andrew said, with a PCR test is they're expensive. They, uh, and you would actually need a rapid PCR test, meaning one you would get the results for the same day. If you get one of the deals where you get it at home and you ship it by FedEx and you get it, you're going to end up getting the results on Wednesday. You might as well have an antigen test. Uh, so you have to, to, to be effective, you're going to have to get a PCR test that you get the results right away. Those, if I was to say today, where could you guarantee get one? It would be an, inter, an airport within the United States with international flights, Miami, Boston, 
Washington, Dulles, the big airports. And, but even there, the hours are starting to reduce because there's not as much of this required anymore. So you really gotta, if you're gonna go this route, you have to plan ahead and it's only gonna help you if for some reason you are you could not take the test anytime on Wednesday or you want to try and get your entire crew through it before Wednesday. Because having seven of eight members of your crew through it on Monday, you still can't register the boat till that eighth person gets the test on Wednesday. So if you have some reason that you want to get people through a PCR test, please, by all means, do it. Uh, some skippers have told me, hey, I want to get it this over on Monday and know who's on my crew and make my adjustments and be done with it. Great. Uh, just be aware. Start looking now for where that PCR test is going to be available. And right up to race day, you're going to have to be checking to make sure it's still going to be available when you think it is. And that, that applies to all uh, do it your uh, testing. So more likely, the majority of our sailors are going to take this supervised antigen test. That can be done physically by physically going to a site that does this. And you should start shopping around now to see how available they are in the area you're going to be on that Wednesday morning. And it can be between midnight, it's just as long as by. Um, 1900 on Wednesday right here, when the registration closes, your captain has to have gotten the negative reason. He has to have a, a, what we need is a guaranteed cruiser list. The crew list to be guaranteed means they have to be able to enter Bermuda, which means they have to have a negative test of some sort. So your captain needs your negative test results by, you know, well, soon enough that he can get the boat registered by 1900. Um, we have options on what you can do here. Um, and this is probably the most important part. And then we're gonna actually go into a little survey and ask you after I describe the, the things you could consider doing, um, what those options are. Uh, we're gonna ask you to, to, to vote, say, hey, if I have to choose today, only knowing what I know now, this is what I think. Because we're, as you'll see, want, some of the options would require us to start putting some advanced planning in progress as early as this week in order to accomplish them. But you may not want those. So that's why we need this survey. So option one is, hey, thank you, Bermuda Race Organizing Committee, but I've got this. I, I know how to do this. I can figure this out. I don't need any help. Um, I and my crew will read the rules and websites. Uh, we will get the right kind. We'll arrange the testing for wherever those people are going to be on Wednesday and we'll get it. Don't save your energy for something else. That's op that would be one option. Another option would be the Bermuda Race Organizing Committee provides you a list uh, of typical um, ways you could get this testing. Um, there has already been in the chat, people who have done travel are chiming in with companies they've used uh, to, you know, in fact, Somers is actually in uh, Ireland at the moment, uh, just this travel and you can get in your hotel room and you get these supervised tests on your video monitor and, and you got them and they go really smoothly. They're, they're accepted by all the airlines. So you can get your crew tested if their crew, the typical crew, we took a, an, another survey, it looks like half or less of the crew members will be in Newport on Wednesday morning. So we're not talking about 2000 people trying to get tested in Newport. We're trying, we're, it would be the absolute maximum would be a thousand, probably less actually would be in Newport Wednesday morning. And the rest are gonna be spread out. They're gonna be working, they may be delivering a boat. So you have to figure out where your people are gonna be on Wednesday. Do they have internet connection? Do I get a test at a physical facility or do I go with some kind of, of uh, video type test? And we could provide you that, that list and say, here's the ones that we've heard of that have, we, we can't endorse them or anything, but this is what people have told us or we ourselves have experienced. Uh, these are the resources we see available to you as of today. And we could keep that up because as you know, who's doing testing is changing by the day. What, you know, just, okay. 
Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, so, yeah, um, like you could just try your local CVS and you'll find, I just did it in the Boston area, not all the CVSs are doing any testing anymore. So you really got to start, like I said, plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. The third option, and this is the one we really need to know if, if you are of any interest in this or not. We can get one or more third party vendors who, if you sign up in advance, um, and advance being you'd have to commit to this by May 15th and pay the fee. And it's, it would be probably 20 to $25 more than you would pay in the cheapest way you could get it online. We'll guarantee that they can test you in Newport if your crew member is there, or they can test you, that would be a physical showing up to it, or they can test your crew member, you, wherever you are with a video test. Um, there, the race committee um, sees some advantages to this if you're trying to get this off your plate and let somebody else worry about it for you, or you don't want to take a chance the days before the race that you can't get somebody where they need to be. And they had enough surge capacity so that we could handle, you know, oops, I was going to do it video, but now I'm in Newport or vice versa, whatever. So that's another option, um, the kind of uh, full service option. So we're gonna, at this point, um, I don't see a lot of questions popping up in the Q&A. So I'm um, gonna put the- Yeah, Mark, uh, quick go ahead. question that you could be able to answer. Um, people seem to be asking about the third party option. And uh, one question is, will PCR tests be offered from them? If you would like the yes, the answer is yes, they could if you want them to. Uh, but you would need, uh, I would need to know that, and we would we have not uh, talked to them about that uh, per se. But they do have that capability, yes. But it would, but we need to put the caveat that it would be more expensive, of course. And, oh, it definitely is going to be more. The the, the Rapid PCR tests run in the two, the cheapest I've seen them is $250. And they can run as much as 300. And it, cause they have to take, as you know, take the swab, put it in the machine and wait, they have to have those machines. So we could have, and they will actually have them if they, if we were to do this, they would have them in Newport because if you go positive on an antigen test they will automatically PCR test you to confirm it. Um, should you desire to have that confirmed, um, which I would advise. Okay, so but what I so I think because that's not on the survey, I would ask this: uh, if let's do the survey, and then um, Kate, could you put my email address in where everybody could see it? If you would like that, send me personally an email so that I will engage this company with that. Okay. Okay. So, so we're gonna that that one's gonna go on the hold until we see you know if okay, they we, well, uh, we will obviously we're obviously continuing to work on this issue, and I think as was stated earlier um, during the call, uh, we will be setting up a frequently asked questions page on the website, uh, sort of a resource page as well, and once we make decisions on if we provide options or places you can go for more information, obviously that will all be um, centralized there and we'll keep that up to date as the race approaches. Um, yes. So, like we we're getting questions about what, what, where can I get certified tests? That's changing dynamically. So all we can do is provide you this resource page and say, you have to check. And that's one of the risks that the, third full service option eliminates. They are going to be there. Absolutely. If you commit by May 15th is their, their cutoff date. So if you're, if you, you know, you're in a major metropolitan area, low risk, no problem. You've got crew members strewn about, um, maybe you're a little more concerned about the risk. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've traveled quite a bit 
in the recent um, months myself, and I have used a sort of, I think what people would say a telehealth um, test system, antigen test, you know, and it's a system where you can go online um, and have the option for them to actually FedEx a test to you. Um, and then you, you log into a Zoom call basically, and you perform the test right there in front of somebody on the Zoom call, and then they certify the result. And 10 minutes later, you have your PDF file with your, you know, your test results ready to email or email to your captain or, and then of course, upload to the MTA um, for final uh, approval. Uh, we did have, speaking of MTAs, we did have a question a while ago, which I just wanna clear up. Um, there was mention that you can do you can start an MTA a month in advance. And that is correct. A month in advance of the race, you can actually go online and select the dates of when you're gonna be racing. Uh, and that MTA process is then started. For instance, you can fill out your name, your address, uh, upload vaccination uh, status cards to it. Uh, and then it's just sitting there pending for you. All it's waiting for is for you to uh, log back in and simply upload your, your test result. Uh, and then that, that process is done for you. Um, you can right now, today, go onto the system and choose some dummy dates. Uh, just say that you're traveling next week, for instance, and go through to the next page of the process where you will get an overview of all the information that you'll need to be prepared to input. Uh, Summers, if it would help, I can sit there and put it up on the screen and do it quickly. Yeah, that might help. Might confuse further, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah. So um, folks, I'm just gonna share a screen. This is the default page. Those of you who've been watching the chat will have seen uh, uh, the actual link for um, the Mariner's travel authorization, um, which will actually come up. This is the page that you'll land on. This is the link that is actually in the uh, uh, bulletin 11. There's a whole host of information on this that speaks to different categories and what is vaccinated. Here's, a, you know, you click on this to see where Bermuda is fully vaccinated uh, uh, pieces. Again, this information is in the uh, bulletin 11 as well. If you scroll down and keep going through all the various different pieces, you'll find a button at the bottom, apply for travel authorization. This obviously just shows April. Don't bother trying to select June yet. It'll all be grayed out, but by the time the middle or third week of, of May will come around, you will actually have uh, all the dates, uh, including the start date of the uh, 17th. And then the, you know, you have to pick your arrival date. So if you're looking at June, obviously we're starting on the 17th. Those of you who think you're going to finish on uh, Sunday, please feel free to put in Sunday. Um, those who are going to feel that they're more likely in the other days, please feel free to put it in. You're not going to be held to it, guys. This is, uh, and ladies, this is more just a, a, a filling in the form uh, process piece. But if I just use a dummy day of uh, next week, confirm the date selection, it will sit there and pump up to the next page. The next page actually has, when you scroll down again, um, it has the default form. So as I say, this is the page where I strongly recommend everybody go look at it and see what you've actually got to fill out. If you're not traveling with minors, don't fill it out. If you're going to traveler's details, every one of us should be able to regurgitate those pieces. Um, the home address stuff, this is all the normal pieces. The trip details is the first area where you'll start to see interesting pieces. So whether it's your first trip to renew it or not, a simple yes or no, attended number of dates you're going to be staying, the purpose of entry. This is intended to have a Newport Bermuda race uh, uh, selection in here. It doesn't exist today. So if I was filling it out today, I'd put a sports event. The arrival mode is the other place where we are going to have Newport Bermuda put into this area. But if I happen to select nothing at the moment, I can actually then put a yacht name, put my... Um, Go for the last one that I did the Newport race on. Your departure date would, in this case, be uh, Friday the 17th, um, and your planned departure date for Bermuda. You'll then actually be asked, do you require a PCR test to get to your final destination? This is for passengers actually flying back out of Bermuda. 
Some jurisdictions actually require PCR still, some will take antigen. Your address in Bermuda, and then we get down to the health side. So it speaks to uh, um, the health insurance pieces, or if you select no, you confirm you'll be responsible for any uh, uh, health uh, uh, cost uh, pieces to it. Any countries you visited recently, will you be staying alone? Can you self-quarantine? Have you had contact with a co confirmed case? These are all generic questions that you'll see. Almost every country has some form of this. Um, Pre-arrival tests and immunization. So this is where you would put in your uh, um, various elements. So if I put, I'll get one before travel. Uh, this is where it would be uploaded. This is where you'd upload your vaccination pieces. Um, so you put all of those pieces in, fill it all out, and it'll prompt you onto the next page where, or sorry, the page where you'll, you'll have your $40 fee. So that is the MTA in brief. I encourage everybody to go in, familiarize yourself with the page itself, familiarize yourself with what bits of information you need. You can, again, just addressing pieces in the actual chat, you will be able to fill out the form with everything except for your upload of your COVID test results up to a month prior to the arrival date. So don't sit there and actually get upset if you put in your arrival date as the 19th and you go to the uh, uh, site on the 17th, it'll be uh, um, a month prior to uh, the actual arrival date. So you should be able to pull it out in the last week of, of May with no issues, get everything in there, and then you're just waiting for your upload of your test results. So that's it, thank you. Uh, okay. And with that process, uh, that departure date, uh, if you are sailing back to the United States, you do not need a pre-departure COVID test from Bermuda. If you're flying back, all air traffic into the U.S. requires a pre-departure test. The MTA process schedules it. You'll get an email to tell you when it is, and it'll be the right amount of time for when you told them you were departing. Correct, Summers? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, go ahead. All right. I just wanted to let people know, because we have a ton of feedback about testing options in Newport in the questions and answer section and obviously in the chat. And uh, Kate has put up the uh, testing um, survey on the bermudarace.com website. So it's bermudarace.com slash testing. If you want to go, go there and put in your answers, uh, what you would like us to attempt to, to do. Um, we've had another good question uh, related to the MTA and registration process, and I was going to ask Andrew if he wanted to answer that. Uh, how does the MTA completed with the test link to the registration process? Does the skipper need to bring everyone's completed MTA? The answer is no. Um, what the skipper needs to have when they show up at registration is knowledge that all of their crew have a negative COVID test. So you need a negative COVID test to register. You need a negative COVID test to get MTA and to go to uh, immigration, but you do not need the MTA in advance of registration. The reason we did that is because there may be people who cannot get an MTA answer fast enough to get their captain uh, in line to register by Wednesday afternoon. The important part for us is we need to know that you're negative, which we believe is the most likely reason why you would be denied an MTA if you're not negative. So your captain just needs to know that you're negative. You don't have to have an MTA to show up to register. Great. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the what the questionnaire looks like up on the screen real briefly. Uh, and for those of you that have been asking, if you think you want testing in Newport, we need to know that tonight because that's something that we got to start this week. We, we know how to do it. We just got to get started. And that would be this option three. That's where the committee sets this up. So fill in, I took the captain option number because I'm the captain, and, um, this is for my vote, and put in here the number of people you think are either going to want this test in Newport or uh, online. Uh, provided to them. Um, and we, depending on the results of this, we may go out for a further refinement. We may just go ahead and do it. Um, so that's, uh, 
that's what you need to, to put in there. And if you want to see what that looks like, um, see, I, I guess I can't go back. Uh, there, if you, um, if you go, I'll just pick somebody's boat, Abigail here. If you go in as, a, as an individual sailor, then you're going to see those same questions. It's option three, if you want us, that's this one here. If you would like the Bermuda Committee to organize testing in Newport, or and if we did that, it would also provide, it's a package deal. You would go on, you would, when the sailor registers, they could select, I want this done remotely via tele, um, a teletesting, or I want it physically in Newport. And away you go. Yep. So there, there is a question that will the survey be posted on the website? That is actually on the website now. So, um, yeah, you can go there now and take a look at it. Um, are there any other questions coming from the group? Um, yes, I know we need, <laughs> there, there's great suggestions. We need a high volume walk-in testing facility in Newport. I don't have control over that. Um, stuck. <laughs> I need to talk to your government officials about that. Uh, they, we will, New, Rhode Island has actually shut, um, since I'm here, the, road, the Rhode Island has actually shut that down. You can now only, the government's only providing testing if you're symptomatic or you've been exposed. So the government's out of it, Rhode Island. That's why we have option three. Option three would be a high volume testing facility only for us. Yeah. So I need okay. to know if you want that. All right. Um, we will be keeping this uh, survey questionnaire up uh, for a, a little bit of time. Obviously, we will be going out to all crew members and captains um, with this link for to invite feedback from them after tonight's um, webinar. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, this webinar will be posted on the website as well. We will be creating a frequently asked questions and resource page where a lot of these questions will be will be there for you to review going forward. Um, I think that we're coming to the end of this webinar this evening. Um, if you do have any further questions that you want to uh, pose to the committee, uh, you can reach out to myself or Mark or anybody that's on the call here and pose your questions to us uh, going forward. And we will obviously be posting answers to that on the frequently asked question uh, and getting back to you directly. So we want to thank all of you. We understand this is complex. We understand this is different than what we've done before. And your interest in getting started on this is sincerely appreciated by us. And we read every bit of feedback, all of us. Yeah. yeah. Right, right to the top. And we're gonna we're gonna do our darndest to make this happen as easily as possible. Yeah, great. Thank you all for uh, coming this evening. Um, please reach out to us if you have continued uh, questions or concerns, and we'll do our best to uh, address those. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted to add that um, this is being recorded, and if you came in late, that this will be um, up on the website um, tomorrow. Um, and if you have any crew members who didn't see it and need to watch it, um, you can send it to them and along with that survey. Great. Thank you.